Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a bit about lifestyle and I talk a lot about personal finance and investments. This video will be a continuation from a few weeks ago. I shared with you in that previous video a thorough comparison between what are the best US equity UITFs that you can get from banks. And I mentioned towards the end of that video that this conversation isn't actually over. And from UITFs, we're now shifting the conversation to ETFs. So just to recall, the US equity UITFs that are being offered by banks are actually based on a target fund that are actually run by international fund management companies. Just to name a few of what we've mentioned, there's the Spider S&P 500, there's the BlackRock iShares S&P 500, and there's also the Vanguard S&P 500 amongst the other target funds that I mentioned in that previous video. These funds would be the ETFs or exchange traded funds. In reality, you don't even really need our local banks anymore to be investing in these target funds. You yourself could be targeting these funds directly. And this is what we'll talk about today. How do you invest directly in these ETFs? And more importantly, should you do this? Let's find out. So let's start with what ETFs are. So similar to mutual fund companies or UITFs, professional investors are actually pulling the money of retail investors, of individual investors such as ourselves. These pulled capital are actually investing in different stocks or bonds, whichever type of fund that you've invested in. So basically, ETFs are similar to UITFs and mutual funds, but there's one glaring advantage of ETFs. So this one great thing about ETFs would be that you can actually time your entries and exits from these funds as they are being traded in the stock market. Why is this a big deal? So if you've invested in Gcash or any of the UITFs from the banks that I've mentioned, you're working with cutoff times to place in your order when you would like to subscribe to the fund or when you would like to redeem your said investment. So with cutoff periods, you're actually just working with time rather than price. So what you're actually saying is, I would like to place in my order and I'm gonna be buying or selling at whatever the price may be by the end of that cutoff period. So it's a lot of guesswork. You could approximate it. You can see the market trend and see maybe it's a good time to buy or exit from your position. But the downside of UITFs or mutual funds would be that lack of specificity. You're not able to properly define your buy price, nor are you able to define your selling price. So you're basically at the mercy, however way the market swings, by the end of that cutoff period. So if you want more precision, you want to take the guesswork out of it. This is the biggest advantage of investing in ETFs over UITFs and mutual funds. Now have I gotten you excited? Here's how you can invest in ETFs. For me personally, I'm investing in ETFs through two different platforms. The first would be eToro and the second would be GoTrade. Both platforms actually offer a wide range of ETFs, but for purpose of simplicity and continuing our conversation, let's stick to S&P 500 ETFs. For eToro, what's available would be the Vanguard S&P 500, and there's a Spider S&P 500 amongst the other S&P ETFs that are available on eToro. Now moving to GoTrade, they also have the same S&P 500 funds coming from Spider and Vanguard, but they also have similar funds from BlackRock's iShares and also Invesco. Actually, when you type S&P, there's a long list here of available funds. There's the S&P 600, there's the S&P All Shares Fund. We won't go into those in this video. That deserves another video in itself. But anyway, if we're sticking to the S&P 500, those are your options. So just like in my previous video, let's go into the minimum investment needed. For eToro, they've recently lowered their minimum investment to now $10. But to open an account, you would need to put in at least $50. But the good thing with those $50 is that you don't have to put it in just one fund. You can actually split it amongst different ETFs that you might be interested in investing in. So that's a minimum investment of $50 to open an account, after which you can invest $10 for whichever fund that you want to invest in. Now moving on to GoTrade, the minimum investment that you would need to open an account is only $10. And you can actually invest in such ETFs for as low as $1. So out of all these, factoring the UITFs in the previous video, GoTrade would actually be the easiest way to get invested 
in this U.S. equity funds. And just to recall again, the lowest U.S. equity index fund that you can invest in locally would be Atram either via Seedbox or Gcash. So that's at 1,000 pesos. But with GoTrade's minimum at just $10, so that's just 500 pesos. So it's actually much easier to invest in GoTrade and ETFs rather than the cheapest UITF. And there's one more factor when you invest in ETFs Regardless if you invest in GoTrade or eToro, the annual trust fee is actually at 0%. Yup, you heard that right. When you buy into these ETFs directly into the global markets, there are no trust fees unlike the UITFs and mutual funds that we're accustomed to, which can charge us as high as 1.5% per annum. So yes, you could save a lot of money by just investing directly into ETFs. Why am I only telling you this now? But hold on, hold on. There's a good reason for that. The reason why I haven't put my investment money into ETFs, into these new investment platforms, would be exactly that. These investment platforms are really new. In fact, it hasn't been one year since I've heard of GoTrade. And for eToro, I've known of it for a few years now. But even then, I still consider them new. I'm still keeping a lot of my investment money in UITFs even with the trust fees just for safety. Isn't that a little too conservative, you might ask? Well, for me personally, if I put too much of my money there, I do put myself at risk. With the local banks, I know they're just right there. If anything happens, I know there's a number that I could call or a branch that I could go to just in case I encounter any problems. And another factor why I still continue to put most of my money in UITFs would be that banks actually include these investments into your bank statement let's say for a purpose of traveling you needed a visa we all know that as filipinos we can't go anywhere without a visa perhaps you are applying for a loan of course these investments can't serve as your collateral but having them there as part of your bank statement and being part of your portfolio this would be considered in being granted whatever it is that you're applying for may it be a visa or a loan or whatever it is that you need to prove yourself worthy of I don't think your portfolio in GoTrade would really serve much purpose to the immigration officer because it's still an app. It's still not officially recognized, but something on your bank statement will, of course, always be recognized as something more concrete and probably more legit. So what do we do then? Do we invest in ETFs or do we keep it in UITFs? For me personally, I only have about 30% of my investments in the global markets via GoTrade and eToro. While the remaining 70% is actually with local banks, at most I could probably grow it to 35% of my portfolio being in GoTrade and eToro, but probably no more than that. I would keep majority of my invested funds in the global market still in local banks. So what do you guys think? Will you be investing in ETFs? Will you take on a more aggressive stance? Let me know in the comment section. If you haven't invested in eToro or GoTrade, you can use my links below. For GoTrade, get $2 off when you use my promo code. That's 998839. That's 998839. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, guys, and happy investing.